Hello, hello, this is Genial Gamer Gal here, and welcome to episode one of my new series, Game Pickup Reviews. And this video and series was suggested by YouTube subscriber, The More Experience Boy. So thank you for your suggestion, I appreciate it. Now what this series is going to be is kind of a little extension of my video game pickups videos. What that means is, Video games that you see in my pickup videos, I am going to review those games. So if there's anything you want to see, hear about, a review of any of those video games in my pickup videos, please leave a comment below which games you want to hear reviews about. Okay, so for episode one, we are going to be taking a look at a Nintendo 3DS game called Shovel Knight. And Shovel Knight is a 2D platforming game. And this game does have several campaigns, so whether you buy the physical version of this game or the eShop version, you are going to get the main campaign, Shovel Knight, and a couple of the extra DLC downloads, and those DLC packs are free, which is pretty awesome because very rarely do you get free DLC. So getting Shovel Knight, you're actually going to get three campaigns. Pretty cool. Now what I'm going to be doing for this video is I'm going to be talking a bit about Shovel Knight, several aspects of the game that I found while I was playing it, and then at the end of this video I will give you my final thoughts on the game. Okay, first we are going to dive into the story of Shovel Knight, and even though this is a 2D platformer, it does have a bit of a story to it, and in this game, Shovel Knight, who is the protagonist and wields a shovel, obviously, has to defeat the evil enchantress and her knights, the Order of No Quarter. And he has to rescue his beloved. So it's a story of the knight saving the damsel in distress. So it's nothing really new there. There is some funny and corny dialogue in between Shovel Knight and some of the townsfolk and some of the other knights that appear. But other than that, it's pretty a generic story, nothing new. It's pretty decent for the 2D platformer, I'd say. Nothing extravagant, it's okay. For a 2D platformer, I say the story is decent. I mean, 2D platformers are not meant to have long stories, otherwise you'd be playing an RPG. So, it is what it is. It's a generic story. For this 2D platformer, I say it fits it just fine. Okay, next I'd like to talk about the graphics and sound of the game. So, this game is in the 8-bit style graphics. And that is one of the reasons why I decided to pick up this game, because my first system was NES. So I grew up playing 8-bit games, and I love the 8-bit games. I still play them to this day. So 8-bit style has a bit of nostalgia for me, and I thought it was pretty charming. The graphics are pretty bright, it's well done, and I think it fits the game very well. I have no complaints about the graphics whatsoever. Now for the sound, I don't have any complaints for the sound either. I think the music fits the game. I have no problems with that at all. I didn't have any sound issues, none that sounded weird or off or anything like that. And I do like that there is a volume control separately of the sound effects and the music. I tend to like to bring down my music a bit so it's in the background so I can hear the sound effects. That's just me, that's how I play, but I really like it when game developers add that little bit of volume adjustment. So nothing there. So as far as the graphics and sound are concerned, I have no complaints about them. I love the 8-bit style, the music and the sound effects and everything is great. I have no complaints there. Okay, moving on to the controls of this game. Nothing too terrible or fancy. You use the circle pad and D-pad for movement. I prefer using the circle pad for this, even though it's a 2D platformer. It's a little more precise. Using the D-pad for some things was a little too tricky, but totally up to you. There's buttons to jump and swing your shovel, and there's some button combos for using magic attacks and a downward shovel attack. So as far as the controls are concerned, it's pretty straightforward. I didn't have any problems with them. There isn't a tutorial for them, but it does come with a nice manual, which is awesome. Yes, a nice paper manual that you can poke through in case you want to find out some information about controls and other things and such. 
So I did not have any problems with the controls as far as any deaths that occurred in the game was usually my fault. So I didn't feel like the controls were hindering the gameplay. I have no complaints about the controls, no problems. It works well. Okay, moving on to gameplay. Now the gameplay in this game has levels. So you'll enter a level, you'll plow your way through enemies, and then at the end you have a boss that you have to beat. Now, as you're going through, there are level checkpoints throughout the levels, and it does save your progress in the level as long as you stay in the level. So what do I mean by that? If you leave the level early and don't defeat the boss at the end, it will not save your progress. So this does have an auto save mode. However, you do have to beat the level and exit to the map screen in order for your progress to be saved. It does not have a manual save. So if you leave the level too early and don't finish it, you have to start it all over again, which kind of stinks. But if you beat the level and you leave it and you exit to the map screen, there's a little saving box in the right top corner there that lets you know it's saving. Also, when you enter the village to purchase some things or talk to the town folk, and you exit the village, it will also save it that way also. So you have to be at the map screen in order for it to save. So if you're in the middle of a level, it does not save your progress. So in this game, you do have a life meter for your health and a magic meter for your magic attacks. There's also gold that you collect as you go throughout the levels that you can spend on some power-ups for your HP and your magic. Now, the buttons that you have to press for your magic attack is a bit of a combo. And I have found that it is a bit tricky to switch between your relics, which is your magic attacks or magic powers. You do have to use the touch screen on the bottom of the, well, whatever system you're playing. I play on the 2DS XL. So it can be a bit tricky if you're in the middle of a fight and you're trying to switch your magic attacks with your thumb because then you can't move and or can't jump or something. So I wish there was an actual physical button press where you can switch between your magic attack weapons and such, but there isn't, so it is a bit tricky to do that. And speaking of tricky, the levels in this game are a bit difficult. So if you think you're going to go through this game and fly through it, this is not this type of 2D platformer. I had spent a quite a few tries on that first level trying to get the hang of it, trying to get the hang of the jumps and using the shovel and defeating the bosses. So it's pretty much a learn and retry. So there's gonna be many deaths. Um, trying to learn how the monsters work, how the bosses work, the best way to defeat them, you know, the patterns they use for their weapons and things. So it's pretty much a learn how and why, how to defeat them. So. Patience is definitely key, so if you don't mind replaying levels, then this game will work for you. Okay, so on to my final thoughts. What do I think about this game overall? I think it's definitely worth a pickup. So if you are a fan of 2D platformers and you like a challenge, then this game is definitely for you. Uh, if you don't mind replaying levels and learning how to defeat the enemies and learning how to defeat the bosses, I think this is definitely worth a pickup. I did not mind replaying the levels and such. It is a really great game. I had a lot of fun playing it. And as I said before, this game is available in the physical version and the eShop version. I do think it might be easier to get the eShop version because the price of the physical copies do vary depending on where you're looking to buy them. Now, when you get both versions, it does come with the extra DLC. So if you buy the eShop version, you are gonna get the two extra DLC campaigns. If you buy the physical version, when you pop the cartridge into your system, it is going to say it needs to download updates and those are the extra two DLC campaigns. So you won't lose out either way. All right, that wraps it up for episode one of Game Pickup Reviews. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments below what other game reviews you would like for me to do. Please check out my other gaming videos. As always, thanks for watching and have a good one.